Uh, and we had also had pop culture come up. Pop, what's up, man? Long time no see. No, but I'm down to talk about the LIBOR software stuff. I'm curious on what Deer Point has to say on it, and he can, you know, correct me where I'm. Uh, I might be misguided. I don't. I mean, I don't think it's much to argue. About. Did he just fucking leave? Well, he uh, he he also couldn't hear Emma, so um, yeah, yeah he, he couldn't hear me, and I didn't know if everybody couldn't hear me or if it just he couldn't hear. Me. I think it was just Deer Point, uh, so I oh. I shot him a message to leave and come back. So um, we'll see if he uh, ends up coming back, but I think he had some connection issues. That's that's funny because I shot him a message too just now before I dropped down and came back, so he must have. I sent him a message saying, can no one hear me? And then I dropped down and came back. And then he obviously realized that he still couldn't hear, probably. And then did it himself. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So he may, he may come back and you guys might be able to have that conversation, Phil. Uh, but I don't know. Maybe Emma wants to fill in and have that uh, dialogue back and forth. I don't know. I mean, I'm not the expert on it, to be frank, when it comes to... So if you talk to Nancy, who's my friend, and she manages... You know, she's definitely highly more qualified than I am to talk about about the issue. She likes to talk about SOFA. She likes to talk about uh, live it doesn't matter anymore. Um, I beg to differ big time, but she doesn't understand macro either. Like, not even close to the way I do. So, but also she's in the markets trading interest rate futures all day long. So who am I to speak? So that's why I'm like, let's let's see what Deer says. Deer, Deer and I think kind of the same way because a lot of the, all of the the leverage that's on the not not the initial dollars that were printed like by the United States government, but all the twenty, thirty, forty, whatever times rehypothecated dollars that are in overseas markets just ignore us over and, and they they use LIBOR. Yeah, for you. <laughs> I mean, LIBOR is as I like to say, it been U.S. monetary policy's ball and chain for decades. It wasn't until 2022 of a year ago that all new U.S. domestic debt was re-indexed to SOFR. And that yeah, was, so- whose idea was it for SOFR? I'm, I'm way behind. I mean, SOFR has been in the can for like 10 years, and the Obama administration and everyone else just said no to it. Because their monetary interests were not within the United States. I, I mean, so is that really in the, U.S. monetary like, policy to have near zero interest rates? Right. No, was it so it's going to benefit Europe mostly? Or? No, oh. no, no. It bankrupts Europe. That's the point. Europe has been oh, okay. driving our monetary policy because we have been indexed to LIBOR for decades. Because if there's a credit freeze in Europe, we would feel that here because everybody's credit card and mortgage is indexed to LIBOR. And so that's the reason why when Powell tried to raise rates in 2018, he you know, had political pressure to stop because he was like breaking shit. And then when you fast forward, and Martin Armstrong's talked about this in interviews too, but when you fast forward to the, the repo spasm of 2019, that happened because the banks stopped accepting euro debt as collateral to give them dollar reserves to create more dollars in their euro dollar system. And so when that happened, that's why there was like a, a, a snafu in 2019 because the banks basically said fuck no the commercial banks in the united states said fuck you to the euro banks we don't want to take your shitty debt because it's worthless the ecb itself is bankrupt and we are tired of you dictating monetary policy that was step one and step two was uh powell raising the reverse repo facility in june of uh, 2021 by five basis points to draw out whatever dollar reserves were left not all of them but to draw out base euro money into the reverse repo facility so whatever dollar reserves those euro, those euro banks had they couldn't leverage them anymore because it wouldn't make sense because if you can get more yield in the reverse repo facility why would you have them in you know money markets so that was step two and then step three was uh, re-indexing the debt to SOFR 
in the U.S. So we could get away with raising rates and we would be well capitalized if a credit snafu happened here domestically if we, you know, it broke something in the U.S. markets. So now we've got over $2 trillion to recapitalize the banks if need be. But, I mean, the banks are already pretty robust because they don't have to go to banks if they try to get capital. They, they can just go to the debt market and issue debt um uh, yeah. as opposed to europe which is like the opposite where their their markets are fragile you know i mean we just had this conversation yeah. because everybody has exposure to treasuries or the dow and the entire world because they trust american markets and then step four mm -hmm. was of course like raising rates and as pal says himself that is daniel daniel Martina booth hits the uh the shoe on the desk like cruise chef um he's not going to stop until the job is done and that job that obligation that objective is to assert American independence, monetary independence, but ultimately I believe, and you can disagree with me, but I believe it, this is America finally asserting its American independence as a nation. Because, I mean, George Washington was still receiving dividends from the Bank of England when he was president. So this completely changes the game. We can be monetarily and economically independent. We don't have an arbitrary LIBOR, or, you know, scandal controlling our monetary policy. And uh, that's how we appropriately build back better and not on Europe's wow. watch.